Nationhood is good. World government is bad. Read about an early try at world government in Genesis and know that God himself intervened to prevent it. Genesis further shows that God set people apart by inducing various languages which led to them starting nations. The vote by the British people to exit the European Union is good because it restores elements of their nation's sovereignty, many of which had eroded over past decades. United Kingdom Independence Party leader Nigel Farage, a leader in the Brexit campaign, jubilantly and significantly stated that June 23rd should henceforth be known as Britain's Independence Day. The main issues impelling the people to vote leave were immigration, arrogant dictation from Brussels, and restoration of independence. In 2015 alone, Britain took in 330,000 migrants, an enormous influx that swayed a huge number of voters. Veteran London Times columnist Philip Collins, a supporter of the Remain minority, angrily offered his opinion. This was a referendum about immigration disguised as a referendum about the European Union. With a hard 152% to 48% majority, the people of Britain said that 53 years of membership in the pact was enough. Most had been persuaded that their country had signed a promising trade arrangement. It was certainly sold that way, not only to Britain, but also to the other formerly independent nations that have joined. There was always some British scepticism about what they joined, a cautious attitude that kept their leaders from adopting the euro currency. Even pro-EU Britons didn't want to replace the pound with the euro. Over in Brussels, EU leaders now worry about rising antipathy toward the pact in France, the Netherlands, Greece, Italy, Hungary, and elsewhere. A total of 28 nations had signed on to the arrangement that began a step-by-step -step and deceitful accumulation of power beginning in 1952 when only six nations formed the European Coal and Steel Community. This early arrangement later adopted the name European Economic Community. Britain joined in 1973, the year the pact dropped some of its pretenses by omitting the word economic and subtly indicating its ultimate political goal with the new name economic community. By 1991, six more nations joined and the group's name became European Union. In a burst of honesty during his 2000 visit to Britain, former USSR dictator Mikhail Gorbachev glowingly described the EU as the new European Soviet. His remark created worries for many. Some in Britain began to fear losing their country while arrogant rule from Brussels took increasing control over lawmaking power. In 2003, Christopher Booker and Richard North issued their comprehensive book The Great Deception, capably tracing the lies given to the British people about the EU. Then, in 2004, this writer received a letter from an official of the UKIP stating, the EU was sold to the British people as a trading agreement and has turned into a political union which is changing our laws and traditions. That summed up the growing British awareness about what was happening. A few weeks before the June 23rd referendum, a meddling President Obama visited Britain to urge the people to choose staying in the pact. At one point, he angered many by stating that should the vote to leave the EU prevail, Britain would have to go to the back of the queue for any UK-US trade agreement. He is credited with helping the Leave proponents gain more votes. Back in 2003, the EU sought to impose a new constitution on member nations. It openly and repeatedly stated overall subservience to the United Nations. When voters in France and Holland rejected this constitution, the steps toward UN control showed up in a new treaty taking them toward a UN world government. This time, only the leaders of member nations were required to give their approval. World government under the United Nations has always been the goal of the EU's creators. But barriers have now been erected on the sought-after prize. We salute the 52% of Britain's voters and trust that they will now understand how enormous has been their contribution to the sovereignty of all nations.